What is up, YouTube? It is another awesome day, except for it is freezing cold. It is six degrees. Check this out. I can blow O's. I usually have my salamander running, uh, but it is loud and I don't want to talk over it. And I'm sure you don't want to hear it. Uh, what we're going to be doing in this video today, we are going to be welding on that 110, 220 multi-process machine. In my case, I'm going to be welding with the Fronius machine. Uh, but we're going to be welding aluminum. And we have two different gas mixes we're going to test out right here. We have 7525 helium and 100% argon. The reason why I have 7525 helium is because I want to see what it does with the weld puddle. I think we'll be able to weld thicker plate on 110 and 220 with it. But uh, we're also going to be welding with argon. Typically when you're welding aluminum uh, MIG or TIG, you're going to be using 100% argon. So we have that as well. And we have 4043 and 5356 wire. Now, depending on your base plate, in the description below, I put a chart for you to look at. And what it does is it uh, matches up your base plates to your filler metal. And it, so you can determine, okay, which filler metal works for this base plate based on penetration, weld quality, ductility, and so on. So I suggest looking at that chart and then matching your base plate up before you weld. That's number one. Here we have the table where you choose your base alloy, filler alloy, Keep in mind you're going to have two base alloys, and in this case we are using 6061 with 5356. So our first base alloy, we got picked, slide all the way over to the right to pick your second base alloy, and we are using 6061 again, but it is possible you might have a different base alloy, so make sure you pick that tab. Um, we're going to slide one, two, three, four spots down and pick 5356. And they rate these on ease of welding, strength of weld joint, ductility, corrosion resistance, recommended for service at sustainable temperatures above 150 degrees in color match, all on an A, B, C, D scale. With 6061 base material using 5356 wire, we get a B for ease of welding, a B for strength of weld joint, an A for ductility, a B for corrosion resistance, and an A for color match. The second thing is clean, clean, clean. Make sure you clean that base material. So you're gonna use a stainless steel brush, go one direction, clean that weld joint, uh, that base material, and then you're gonna take a rag with some acetone or some wipes, and then you're gonna clean that residue out of there. Uh, once you're done, or if you have some test plates, you can cross section it, and you can go right to your local grocery store and buy some oven cleaner, and that will actually give you a cross section to determine that you're getting the accurate or the right amount of penetration you're looking for on that weld joint. So those are my suggestions. This is what we're gonna do in the video. So get ready, here we go. Keep in mind, feeding aluminum can be a pain. So if you do have existing equipment, you might wanna look at spool guns like this or push pull guns. But in our scenario, we are using a Transteel 2200 and a 15 foot whip, booyah. Take that stainless steel brush and go one directional to get the oxide layer or any contaminants. Then take your acetone, put it in a rag and clean that weld joint out of all contaminants and debris. I run about a 5.8 stick out or contact tip to work distance. So that way I'm not eating up contact tips but you always wanna run a push angle like this. Never a drag angle like this, which this would be a drag angle. So I'm using 4043, and here's a push angle. I am doing a little V pattern, so I'm going into the weld joint and back. Small little tight pattern, just because I like to get a little dime stack like that right there. Now this next weld, I am running a drag angle, but I'm still doing a similar V pattern, back and forth motion into the joint back of the puddle so I can get a dime stack but in the drag position. Now look at both welds you can see the soot and the drag and no soot on the push so always make sure you push. Now here's a comparison between 4043 and 5356 you can notice it's a really bright light and it's very clean because of the silicon in the 4043. Now we're going to weld with 5356 and it's gonna be a little sootier because it has magnesium in it, but also you notice the arc is green in comparison to the 4043. So check out the soot level in comparison between 5356 and 4043. And I'm gonna brush that off and both welds look good. 
We will be welding 60 thousandths with 047 5356, 100% argon gas, all on 110 power. I always start left to right. I'm going to choose ALMG, which is 5356, because remember, it has magnesium. And then I'm going to choose 045 and 100% argon gas. Remember, we're on 110 power. So I max out at 158 amps, 390 inches a minute, and 23.2 volts. I'm going to take this left knob and set it to material thickness, which is 60 thousandths, and start off with 15.5 volts. As mentioned before, you're going to be running a push angle, and I'm not running a weave pattern at all, like a up to the joint and back to get the dimes. I'm just running a straight stringer. Uh, the toes, they're wetting in really nice on both edges of the plate. Keep in mind this is 60 thousandths. Base material with 364 wire. It is polished, polished, polished. Now let's grab the camera, take a look at this weld. See how nice it is, very consistent. Look at the ripples, didn't even put a weave in it at all. Nice. I'm gonna switch over to 7525 helium on this 60 thousandths plate, just to see what the difference is between this and argon. And if you listen and you look it, well, you're not noticing much difference. So I'm gonna stick with argon for the rest of this weld test because I welded plate after plate after plate and I haven't seen any difference really. The next test is gonna be eighth inch material thickness with 047 5356, 100% argon all on 110 power. I'm going to adjust the material thickness now since we're welding eighth inch. I'm going to set it to 0.125, which equates to eighth inch, which gives us 120 amps at 310 inches per minute wire feed speed. And I'm going to turn my volts down somewhere around 14.6. Now I'm running vertical up uh, T-joint or fillet weld, and I run it similar to steel, so I go up in the joint down to the side over up in the joint down to the side over up in the joint down to the side over and i do that all the way up until i finish my weld seam and here's what it looks like nice and clean no spatter very consistent ran well now we're running 5 16 material thickness with 047 5356 100 argon all on 110 power Since we're running 5 16 plate on 110 power, I'm going to crank this all the way up to max. And it gives us about 390 inches a minute at 23.2 volts. Now listening to it and looking at the arc, you know, it's very aggressive, you know, because I can't get that many volts off 110 power. Um, but uh, as far as consistency and how it's welding, it's laying in there pretty nice. I think on 110, quarter inch would be the max for this machine. So 5 16 isn't going to really cut it on 110 power so let's bump it to 230 volt let's weld that 5 16s plate again with 047 5356 100% argon but on 230 volt power let's max this machine out it's going to give me about uh, 550 inches a minute wire feed speed and at a zero setting about 23.7 volts now keep in mind on this trans steel 2200 you do have a duty cycle and you can weld for about two to three minutes at this range before it cuts out so if you're looking for longer weldments make sure you look at the higher one which is a trans steel 2700 now the spray arc really nice uh no spatter i'm doing a little whip and pause make sure you run a little bit more drastic angle in the push to get uh rid of, rid of some of the soot but uh really nice really consistent and can't really complain about it at all so let's take a look at this weld seam see what it looks like and look at that oh yeah looks nice